Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Planet Navitas. My name's Stephen Oliver, and I'm here to say that the silicon chip is dead. Let me clarify that. In the world of power semiconductors, the silicon chip processes data, ones and zeros. It does that in Intel, AMD, NVIDIA chips and at low voltage, that's the important thing. It's a one volt chip. So silicon processing data. And it is very good at it and it will have a long life. So for this application, the silicon chip is not dead. But there's another application for silicon chips and that is processing power. So this is volts and amps and you're creating uh, 12 volts for your laptop from 110 volts AC, or you're charging your electric vehicle. You're processing power with a silicon chip. Those chips tend to be high voltage, 650 volts and higher. And in that area, the silicon chip is definitely dead. So what? What's replacing it? There are two new kids on the block, new technology. One is called gallium nitride or GAN. The other is called silicon carbide, or SIC, or SIC, depending on how you want to pronounce it. In both of these cases, these are called wide band gap semiconductors, and that basically means they have uh, faster um, electron speeds, they have lower capacitance, which means they work very quickly. They are basically a next generation of silicon chip. So the next step in the revolution. Generally, gallium nitride, or GAN, replaces silicon MOSFETs. Generally, silicon carbide replaces silicon IGBTs. So GAN is great for things like cell phone chargers, laptop adapters, data center power supplies, TV power supplies. Silicon carbide is the big stuff, turning the wheels on a Tesla. Uh, wind turbines, railway locomotives, big string inverters for solar power. So that's the general split. Taking GAN, gallium nitride, as an example, this is actually the second revolution in power electronics. Back in the late 70s, early 80s, there was a big change in the silicon chip itself. We went from what's called a bipolar transistor to a switching MOSFET. Now, that was a new technology. At the same time, we had new magnetic components, new control techniques, new topologies. And that meant that in a very short space of time, only 10 years, we had a five times increase in what's called power density. That's how much power you can squeeze into a small space. At the same time, the efficiency goes up, cost comes down, speed is the key. When we go from a low speed, 50 hertz is just the frequency that comes out of the wall, very low speed. 30 kilohertz is now how quickly the devices switch inside the topology. And when you switch something very quickly in power, it shrinks. Basically, if you have a transformer and you put energy into it slowly, you have a large amount of energy, you have a large ring. If you do it in smaller chunks, but do it very quickly for the same average power, that transformer ring shrinks in size, weight, and cost. And that's one of the examples. So higher speed makes things smaller. So over 10 years, we had a huge revolution. Also what happened in the industry is the kind of company that existed back in the early 70s did not exist by the mid 80s. You had new kids coming out of university, taking advantage of the new technology. And this, for example, is where Delta Electronics was born. Delta Electronics is the biggest power supply company on the planet. They did not exist before this. So new kids, new ideas, that's a revolution. Now, in the 40 years since then, silicon has had improvements. But over time, you spend more money and you don't get the benefit. Then along comes a new technology. In this example, we're looking at gallium nitride. The same thing is happening now again. So we're in the middle of a second revolution. We've got a new material that runs at a higher speed. Now we're talking, instead of 30 kilohertz, we're talking a megahertz. That's a million cycles per second. Speed is everything. Speed gets you that small size. The material gets you the higher efficiency. 
everything improves. And new kids on the block, like Navitas, turn up as well. Now, we're a young company, but we're old guys. So luckily, we've got the heritage to use this for the future. But it definitely shows that we're right now in the middle of that next generation shift. So a quick look at that technology. From silicon to gallium nitride was one step. And gallium nitride is great, but it has one big Achilles heel. And in this technology, there's a, a, one of the pins is called the gate. When you turn it on and off, it's a semi-conducting, so it conducts or isolates. The gate itself is very weak. If you put too much power on it, it will snap. It will physically break down. So what we have to do is we protect it. Navitas is the only company that has an integrated GAN IC. So on one chip, we've got the main power switch and driver and regulator, ESD protection diodes, under voltage lockout, current sensing, autonomy. It's a real IC. This means we've shipped 70 million devices with great quality. So we need a very, we make a very robust device which can also operate at high speed without any issue. We've gone to the point now where we've got this half bridge, which is one main switch above another, plus all of the interconnections between it to make it very reliable, very high speed. Remember, speed shrinks things down. So that's the gallium nitride side of it. We also have the silicon carbide. In this case, silicon carbide is a higher voltage technology ranging from 650 volts up to 6,500 volts. So it's a real swing. That's what makes it great for railway locomotives, turning the wheels on your electric car, wind turbines. This is a great technology. It is also very rugged. What we've done with our Genesic brand of silicon carbide is we've taken a hybrid of what's called trench and planar technologies made them combined. That gives you the highest performance small size, also very rugged. So silicon carbide, excellent design. A quick look at where they go. I said the silicon chip was dead. At low voltage, it will survive. So this is the Intels of the world. They will still be there. Gallium nitride in this blue bar covers a huge range from washing machines, TVs, electric scooters. Silicon carbide across the top, that's the big stuff. Wind turbines, railway. And there's a little bit in the middle where sometimes GAN is good, sometimes silicon carbide is good. Good news for us is we're agnostic as to what the customer chooses. If they could choose GAN or silicon carbide, that's okay. So what does this mean comparing silicon to the new stuff? Well, the first thing is this is the inside of one of these chargers, okay? So if you tear the plastic off this, it looks like that. You've got capacitors, transformer, uh, EMI filter. And this example is with silicon. That's the old stuff. Note that it's a certain size, 65 watts of power, 43 cubic centimeters. But the speed, 65 kilohertz, is quite slow in modern terms. So 65 kilohertz, slow with silicon. There are some people using GAN today. We're not the only people in the industry. but they're still at low speed. And what it means is they're still the same size. So you're kind of wasting that technology. And they've kept it slow because they have this, what's called a discrete approach with the vulnerable gate. That's the limitation. When you go integrated IC with GAN, you go fast and you go small. So this is a like for like comparison at 65 watts. So you've now shrunk the passive components, that's the caps, EMI filters transformed by 50% to do that. And then you can also say, well, I'm quite happy with this size. What can I do in it? Well, tell you what, I'll put twice the power inside it. So this is using the speed to put more power in the same size box. So that's a low power 65 watt example. This one. This is a 120 watt. Are we still carrying these things around in our bags? Anybody still got one of these? Yep. Well, you can get that one, which is tiny. And we've got it on the wall just behind here. 
a real life size so you can see exactly the size comparison. So again, speed is everything. We've got to shrink things down. So that's the world of cell phones, laptops. Let's go to cars in this case. This is the original silicon-based charger for the Model S. And it's a beast. It's very big. And we measure power electronics in how much power per unit of volume. So in this case, 0.2 kilowatts per liter. OK? The one on the right here, this is a picture, but we have the actual unit next to the Tesla at the other end of the booth. This is more than 10 times the power in the same size volume. So it's going from silicon to silicon, uh, in this case, to gallium nitride. This also includes, this is unidirectional, which means you charge the car and then the energy goes into the wheels to move it. You can have a thing called bidirectional, which means you can charge your car and then if the power goes out, your car charges your home or your car charges somebody else's car. So that's that bidirectionality. It also contains the DC-DC inside the same box because once you've got 400 volts or 800 volts in the battery, you've still got a radio that works at 12 volts. So you have to step down to 12 volts for the radio, navigation system, windshield wipers, all of that kind of stuff. So you put all of that in a smaller box with higher efficiency, you got 10 times smaller. That's the difference between silicon and GAN technology. Now we've also got a look on the roof. This is called a micro inverter. This example is from Enphase, a little company in uh, California. And they did a, a study, and this is actually their slide that they presented at one of our investor meetings. In this case, they looked at going from silicon to silicon carbide. A little bit of benefit, twice the speed, didn't quite go. Remember, silicon carbide's like railway locomotives and big stuff. And this is only a 300 watt unit, so it doesn't really apply there. But then they said, we'll go with GAN. They ran it 10 times faster, and they said a significant cost reduction in the unit. We estimate about 25%, which is pretty good for saving money. So that's solar. Looking at data centers, we got the two silver boxes here. The big one is silicon. The small one is gallium nitride. You get twice the power in the same size. For a data center, that means you've got less area in the rack for power, more for memory, GPU, CPU, the useful stuff that you actually want. So that's the big change there. And then when it comes to uh, home appliances, not a very exciting market, but every time you use your washing machine or your dry clean, your spin dryer or your refrigerator, because you've got a motor spinning to compress the coolant, you go from silicon to gallium nitride. This thing's tiny. It's only about uh, basically that big. That was a circle. We have one in our kitchen area. Take a look at it. Incredible energy savings, incredibly small size, and all of these extra features. Now, don't just take my word for it. There's a, a company called Yol that does analysis of the market. And right now, the transition from silicon to these new technologies, they estimate that by 2027, 30% of the silicon chips for processing power will be dead, replaced by gallium nitride silicon carbide. So this is a huge ramp in the market. Cell phone chargers, laptop chargers, uh, electric vehicles, solar panels, all of this is where silicon is giving way to GAN and SICK. That's not the end of the story. That's just, if you like, making more things, bringing efficiency benefits. We also bring sustainability benefits. Compared to silicon, every time you get one of our GAN ICs, you have a net four kilogram benefit compared to the silicon. So actually, going to this saves the planet. And by 2050, which is the year of the Paris Accord target, we estimate that gallium nitride and silicon carbide can save six gigatons per year of carbon dioxide, and that is a big number. So that's a quick look at the sustainability side. So the silicon chip is dead. Who agrees? Yay! Okay. That was the first question. Who, who said yes first? There you go, sir. Thank you. Oh, sorry. They are very robust, very strong. 
I should also say thank you to Spigen. Sean is around here somewhere. Thank you very much. Great Spigen charges here. Very tiny. I carry this one myself. All uh, right. Next questions. If you look around you, you will find the answer. How many kilograms of CO2 do we save with each chip? Four. Four. That was an easy one. The next one will mean that you have to turn left or right. Or those over there, look that way. What are the atomic numbers of gallium and nitrogen? Who's first? Uh, Thickest gentleman? There you go. Thank you. And the last. Last one or any more? <laughs> oh, yes, this is Galley and Nitro, our little characters here. Actually, can I do that? Yeah. All right. Turning the other way, sorry for the guys over there, you'll be able to say, but this gentleman might just turn around. Atomic numbers of silicon and carbon. Not quite. Atomic numbers of silicon and carbon. The gentleman in the green jumper might have a look. 14 and 6. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's written on the wall just behind you over there. What's next? <laughs> What's next? Sir, do you have a cell phone? Yes. Good answer. <laughs> there we go. Sir, the red shirt, do you have a laptop? Yeah. There you go. All right, what have we got left? We've got one, two, three, four. OK. Um, what day is it? <laughs> For, you, I think you've already had one, have you? I should be professional. That's the name of the company. Oh, yeah. It's always confusing. Always confusing. OK. So GAN and Silicon Carbide are the technologies. GAN Fast and Genesic are our brand names for the technologies. But what's the name of the company? Never says one of those ladies over there. OK. Last one. Uh, what are we going to say? What are we going to say? Uh, if you add up the Genesic and Ganfast things we've shipped, how many do you get? 78, the lady with, there with the, there we go, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. This has been a pleasure being with you this afternoon. I hope you have a great show. Remember, let's go Ganfast and Genesic strong. Thanks guys.